My name is Ma Maxine Maxine Hedrum. <laughs> and you're watching Deanna and v Vince's vlogs. <laughs> because life doesn't suck. Doesn't suck. <laughs> One hundred eighty-seven point two. I'll take it though. That's a win because yesterday we had pizza. You know the stuff just tastes so good. I feel like I feel like I'm having a bad hair day. I don't I don't know I don't know what this is doing. Uh, what did we do yesterday? We went to the mall. <laughs> Check it around. What do you think of the DJI Osimo? It's pretty neat. <laughs> she's, she's taller than you. Turn around. She is taller than me, so. Can you touch her? No, it says don't touch me. Oh. Instead, oh, she has a selfie. Name. We picked up our new glasses. These I love are, them. These are mine and those are her new glasses. Um, mine feels a little weird. These are my first pair of plastic lenses. Transitionals. No, I've had transitionals before, but these oh. are my first pair of plastic lenses. And uh, I guess my prescription changed because it's stigmatism. So things are a little, I don't know, things look a little weird. Here. <laughs> See, looks weird, right? I don't know. Could you guys see that? Maybe not. Oh, you're back. Um, you know how when you like, when you really want to watch a good movie and then you end up watching a not so good movie and you end up in a funk? Well, that's what happened yesterday. So what did we just watch? War Machine. It's a Brad Pitt movie that's now on Netflix, Netflix. that you could watch, but don't. Mm. It's a total waste of time and completely boring and has absolutely no point. Well, the point is we just keep making the same mistakes and replacing. It makes no new points. It tells you nothing you don't already know. Uh, well, I think some people are probably delusional thinking we really do make a difference, but really we're just replacing the same old assholes with new... It's not interesting. Yeah, so it is do not the worth same watching. Thing. All right, that's it. No, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Here's the thing about War Machine. Like, this is Memorial Day weekend, so Netflix is pushing it as like a big Memorial Day release, like an actual theater movie shot by or, or made by Plan B by Brad Pitt's company and starring Brad Pitt is being delivered directly to your home. Although it just wasn't a blockbuster Memorial Day movie. The first five minutes of it, like 20 people are introduced over in voiceover. There's no way anybody can keep track who these 20 people are except for Brad Pitt and Trofer Grace. You don't recognize any of the other guys. Uh, then it takes over an hour into the movie before you figure out, before Tilda Swinson shows up as a reporter and sort of gives you an understanding of what the movie's purpose is and what the flaw in our lead character is. And then it's another half an hour, an hour and a half into this, before there's any battle that actually takes place. It's just wasn't a good movie. I don't know, this is just totally weird. Anyway, so let's do some stuff today. This was a store display for Super Nintendo. I got it out of a Best Buy in Palmdale and uh, just cleaning it up, taking some photos of it and gonna put it up on eBay to see if somebody else wants to give it all the love that I've been giving it for 20 years. Um, it's a pretty cool unit. You open it up, you get access to the Super Nintendo. You can set a timer as far as like how long people can play it for. You can adjust the bass. It's got a bunch of speakers in it. There's two up here, there's two here, and there's a woofer base right there. And, uh, and yeah, grab the controllers and you play it.
The TV isn't coming on, but actually, now that I think about it, this was a specially designed TV for hotels. You can hear the game is playing. Um, and I think it can only be turned on with the remote control. So I'm going to have to, I don't have the remote for it. I'm going to see if I can get a programmable RCA remote and see if I can get this thing back on. This is a six foot tall Game Boy Store display. I also scored this out of a Best Buy in Palmdale. I w walked into the Best Buy and there was uh, this, three Super Nintendo units, a uh, Sega Genesis unit, and a TurboGrafx-16 display units all in the corner. And I was like, what are you guys doing with all that over there? They're like, make me an offer for it. I made him an offer. He said, you gotta get it out by today. I said, okay, I loaded them all up. I've had these things for, I don't know, like 15, 20 years now. It's been quite some time. I gave two of the Super Nintendo units to friends. Actually, I sold it to them for what I paid for it, which was pretty cheap. And the Turbo Graphics went to my brother, and the Sega Genesis went to my brother. Uh, the Game Boy stayed with me, and so did the Super Nintendo you saw just a second ago. Um, so it's a six foot tall Game Boy. Pretty neat, right? So you actually put a Game Boy game cartridge inside of here and you use this to control it and it goes through up into the TV and it uses a box in there called the Demo Boy to make it work. Uh, problem is Demo Boy doesn't work correctly so you end up with this. If I push the reset button, so you can see base is loaded as the cartridge that's in there, but it just isn't refreshing the way that it's supposed to. So there's something wrong with the Demo Boy, but I don't know what. The thing about this though is there's there's these Super Nintendo Super Game Boy cartridge adapters where you could take a Game Boy cartridge, stick it inside of here, and play it on a Super Nintendo. So the easy fix for this machine is to just put a Super Nintendo unit in there and stick one of these in there and you'll get Game Boy graphics up on the screen and be able to play. Which makes a little more sense because this says battery and this says battery and like you've already, you're emulating this screen twice. Uh, if I remember correctly, when you use this, this just blows up and fills the entire screen and it's a better playing experience. I sense somebody wants something. Hmm. And then there's another one right there. What is it that you want? What do you want? So a discussion has broken out uh, under one of the videos about elevation and elevation sickness. And uh, I want to tell a quick story. Uh, Deanna and I were in Colorado and we went up to Pikes Peak. Of course the wind starts blowing now so you probably can't hear any of this. It was fine a moment ago. Anyway, we were in Colorado and we went up to Pikes Peak which climbs from, I don't know, like zero elevation to 14,000 feet. And uh, on our way up, you go through like all these different ecosystems, like the trees disappear and you get to like desert land and there's snow and it's just, just it's an interesting drive. Uh, but we would stop on our way up and you know, 5,000 feet, 8,000 feet, whatever, and get out of the car, take some pictures and everything was fine. And I was like, oh, this is no big deal. And then we got up to the top to 14,000 feet and I got out of the car and I took a step and immediately I was like, <laughs> Just couldn't breathe, like, it was so weird. Uh, we spent a few minutes up there and I was like, we need to get the hell out of here. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my Pikes Peak story. Somewhere along the line, the phone stopped tracking my walk. So it was probably a typical distance at typical pace. 20. subscribe and turn on notification notifications and li li like this vi vi video and you should like the Facebook page and follow us on Instagram and on t t t Twitter
subscribe.